The classical performing arts of India date back to over 2,000 years when... Whoa, cut, cut, cut. That's how so many documentaries start. I mean, it's classy and all, but who wants to hear a dull history lesson anyway? I don't, and I bet you don't either. So let's just talk. My name is Madhavi. I've been pretty into the classical Indian performing arts ever since I started Bharatanatyam at the age of four. As a classical Indian dance and music enthusiast, I began noticing interesting trends in the way people perceive these arts. Now I could lecture you all in a very professorial manner about my research and my findings, but instead I thought it'd be good to talk directly to you. I'd say that most Indians' perceptions of the classical arts is that it's a complete opposite um, style to Bollywood and to mainstream, and that it's a little old and a little dated. Um, I also think that it's they equate traditional with maybe less interesting or not Western enough or not modern enough to be entertaining. Generally, Bharatanatyam is pretty slow, um, and it kind of is. I don't know if the, I guess depressing. I also just don't like the singers of the classical music sometimes also. I just think it, it's very different than what I'm usually accustomed to. Um, I think a lot of people who are Indian have this misconception or preconception of the classical arts that, oh, they're boring, that's what my grandmother listens to. Like, why would I be interested in it when, the, when there's all of this hip, cool Western music coming out from India? But I think if people really are educated about the beauty of the classical arts and they kind of approach it with an open mind and think, well, this is who, you know, this is a part of my heritage, this is part of who I am. I think that they'll have a lot more appreciation for the classical arts. Um, I think it's really sad that people, that people say that classical music is boring because it's really not. And if they are able to have that deeper understanding of what's happening in classical music, I think that they'll just appreciate the entire Indian culture so much more. You know, Anjali, that's a great point. It's kind of like how people in the West view opera or ballet. So now I find myself wondering, is this just a problem with the non-residential Indians or the Indians who don't live in India? What about the Indians who do live in India? Um, it was interesting. When I went to India, um, I told everyone that I danced classical Bharatanatyam. And everyone in India said, oh, well, obviously, you're from America. Of course you do Bharatanatyam. So it kind of seems like in India, there's this shift towards westernization that people in India want to become more westernized, whereas people in America or people in the West really appreciate the classical arts a lot more than people in India do, um, which to me is actually really sad because the beauty of India is in its culture and heritage, and it almost seems like a lot of people in India are trying to kind of put that behind them and become a more westernized society. Yes, it's true. In India, Indians in India are sort of moving away from the Indian dances and are adopting more of Western-style dances. And in my school, we, at school functions, we would have um, freestyle dancing, like Michael Jackson-style dancing or Madonna-style dancing, and then we've never really had Indian dances. So some of the Indians in India are even less interested in the arts than the ones here. Do you ever think it'll be mainstream? I think that you're fighting a losing battle if you think that you can't westernize. Um, you, can't, you can't make Bharatanatyam, Carnatic music, whatever, mainstream without acknowledging the globalization, the westernization of Indian media. That's, that's ridiculous. It's, you have to, I think, acknowledge that or, or find a way to deal with that because it's there and it's really, really present. And India itself is becoming more westernized. So I'm hearing a lot about why people might not be interested in these arts, what factors are causing these perceptions. So now let's talk about what could make these arts more appealing. And to do this, I've got my friend Ashika, a professional Kathak dancer, to talk to you and discuss what might make you more interested in the classical Indian performing arts. Namaskar. My name is Ashika Dave, and I have been studying Kathak dance for 16 years. Namaskar, Ashika. We're going to have a discussion about what might get people interested in the classical performing arts. Um, I've only ever seen one 
collegiate um, Bharatanatyam classical dance team perform. And when they did, they performed like to LMFAO and they remixed it and they did all these very cool sort of formations and had all these girls performing at once. And that made it a little more interesting. I definitely think that having higher numbers makes any dance form more interesting to me personally. So Kathak, like many of the classical art, in India, such as Bharatanatyam, Kuchipudi, Odissi, um, Kathakali, are all based in storytelling, um, but also in in a solo art. And so, my dance teacher really emphasizes that a Kathak is a is a solo artist. However, in a, in a Western atmosphere, you have to kind of adapt to the audience a little bit, and so my dance teacher has choreographed pieces that are for multiple students so that they can perform together as, as in a choreography that's very similar to a modern uh, Western style. I think that information about the roots and the history of it can be uh, maybe explain more to Westerners. Before I perform or any demonstration that I give of Kathak dance, I always explain um, the meaning behind the hand gestures or the story that I'm going to tell, or even uh, explain the footwork that I, I would be demonstrating or performing. And this helps the audience, regardless of where they are from, give them, uh, give them a better context of what um, I'm actually dancing. Maybe if they integrated more with, with today's world, I would, but it doesn't seem like they are. I think for anything to, to be passed along, um, to interest and excite the younger generation, there, there may be something that they need to, to hold on to that they understand. So I take, a, I take examples again of um, um, like Timberland, who samples classical uh, guzzles in his music. So then that introduces a whole new audience to those, maybe in a way that they weren't, they wouldn't have appreciated if they just heard it straight on. Interesting what you find, actually, my dance teacher, um, Bandit Chitar Sas, performed and has collaborated with an amazing tap dancer, Jason Samuel Smith. They both stay within their tradition but are able to have a dialogue on stage and have a dance battle style of concert where there are jazz musicians on one side of the stage and classical Indian musicians on the other side. And so it's this huge conversation of different cultures and art coming together on one stage but maintaining their own traditions. Interesting. It looks like some of these classical performing artists are doing some of the things that you suggested. I think what I'm gathering from this is maybe artists need to reevaluate their methods of outreach and connecting with the audience. Any ideas? When the next, when the young generation picks up the art and performs it, and when they present it, I feel it is a lot more interesting. Um, even though I value it, however it's presented, um, I'm going to take it more to heart if I see people closer to my age uh, doing it. It's an, it. I think it's really important for the younger generation uh, to present this art form as their own to show its vitality, to show its, uh, that it's living, um, rather than um, reserving it for the older generation. That is so true, Josh. The fate of the classical performing arts really is in the hands of this generation. We have to be the ones to break that perception of, that's what my grandmother listens to, and try to get more people interested. So many people are doing so many awesome things in the name of innovation while keeping with their tradition. And I mean, at the end of the day, what is art really about? And art, the art forms exist so that people can find peace or can find happiness through them. And if people aren't finding the same amount of happiness in the old classical orthodox interpretations, then why not evolve? I'm not saying that we should throw out the old or reject it in any way or forget it, but I think that part of the art form's beauty is that it can evolve. And it, by limiting it to this little box of like mythology, I think we, it's a restriction that it doesn't necessarily need to have. Exactly. I hope realizing that artists are trying to connect more with you, the audience, will motivate you to go out, give these arts a try, see what they're all about. I mean, after all, they're part of our heritage. If we don't keep the arts alive, who will?